We live in an era where artificial intelligence is changing everything, like the way we work and the way we live. And because of it, there are new AI jobs. Today, we have a chance to talk to an AI educator, Chris Cooney from Washington State University. Thank you, Mr. Cooney, for accepting our invitation. Thank you for having me. So what is this like to be an AI educator and what does it mean? So to me, what an AI educator means is simply someone who's willing to experiment with having AI be a part of the learning experience from our students. In the College of Business, um, the Carson College of Business, where I teach, we've adopted a stance on AI that it, it is part of the tool set that our students are going to need and the skill set that they need um, to be successful in the future of business. So um, an AI educator is then someone who understands that and is willing to, again, experiment with it, try it out, and work with students as they discover what's possible with AI um, and see the potential that it represents for them. Can you specify what you teach there to your students and what tools do you find, like something that everyone should know? At Washington State University, I teach um, a number of classes. The one that I use AI in the most is my entrepreneurial marketing class. So I use AI in other classes that I teach. I teach an introduction to uh, business as well, and I teach the Teams class. But in the entrepreneurial marketing class, it's a senior level class. Most students take it in either their third or fourth year. Um, and so that's where I use a lot of AI. And the reason that that fits well is that students need in the, in the class, they need to develop an idea, a new idea for a mobile app. And that's a, a design constraint within the, the um, class. So they have to come up with an entrepreneurial idea, but that entrepreneurial idea needs to ultimately take the form of a mobile app. So um, the tool that I found really useful is just simple, you know, either Google Gemini or ChatGPT, um, simple, you know, text-based prompting. Now, of course, they can do more with, with those as well, but where we start is really using it for brainstorming. So those are the tools that I, that I use, and that's the purpose that, that I, we start with, is brainstorming ideas for a new concept. So what do you think? Is AI making students more creative? <laughs> Good question. Um, so I think AI has the potential to make or help students realize their potential. So I think as human beings, we are all creative people. We are all creative beings, right? We have creativity in us, and it's something that we can express to different degrees. So using AI um, enables students to get past points at which they might otherwise get stuck. So if I were to ask you today, you know, come up with a business idea, right? And do it for something that you care deeply about. So your first step before ChatGPT might be to write down some ideas mm -hmm. or to maybe go out on Google and search what's been done. Maybe think about the kinds of people that you'd want to serve um, with, with, with a, new, a new app. Um, so that process could, you know, would very just much be you, but what you'd really be doing is exploring. So exploring potential ideas, exploring um, things that you could do. So what, to me, what AI, generative AI specifically, enables students to do is do that exploration in a more efficient way. Oh, what can you say about your students? Are they interested in AI, like using it in a proper way? And how do you ensure that they're using it for good? Huh, good question. So, so I would say, Students are interested in using AI for a number of reasons. Part of it is just curiosity. Unfortunately, some students also see the potential to be able to um, get information in a quicker way, get things done in a quicker way, just for the sake of getting them done. So um, what, what I try to teach is to use it for, as that tool for exploration. Um, and to not just see it, uh, yes, use it as a way for um, getting things done to create efficiencies, but ultimately don't see it as just a way to finish something. Use it as a way to explore something and maybe get an idea out that maybe otherwise you wouldn't. And then um, 
use your own brain um, and maybe even potentially input from other people, whether it be team members, whether it be potential clients, to make that idea better. And then maybe go back to ChatGPT and work on it. So I think, so students' interest in AI is not necessarily always that is what they have in mind. It might start with they've seen something cool, they've seen something like a video that someone's created using AI and say, I never even knew that was possible, or an image that they created. But then to be able to put it in a framework, in my case, a, a marketing plan or, or, or marketing strategy or a new product, to be able to show them you can do that same level of, of, of um, exploration, but actually have it have an outcome that has um, a real, real application. It could even turn into a real business. I like the process of turning their initial interest in, in things like ChatGPT, things like MidJourney, into an actual product, um, to an actual thing that they could use, that they make money with. So there are many lecturers <clears throat> who don't want their students to use AI, and you're the one encouraging them to use AI. <laughs> so what can you say about this? Like, so at any institution, but right now, there are going to be faculty members that enable their like want their students to use AI, and other ones that are more apprehensive. So if that's their perspective, you know, I, I respect that. I, but, but in what I teach, often what is it standing in their way isn't um, mastering something or memorizing something. What's standing in their way is getting started. What's standing in their way is trying something out. What's standing in their way is understanding maybe a big picture or a structure that might take me a week or two of lectures and a week or two of in-class activities for them to understand. So for me, it makes sense for the, the topics that I teach and the way that I teach. But others, it might really disrupt the way that they teach and the things that the, the learning objectives that they have for their students. So as a student, I could see where that could be very difficult mm -hmm. to, to navigate. Um, yeah, so, so I think that that's, that's where we're at right now with universities is figuring out not only how do we teach, but then how do we assess what we're teaching our students and the value of that. Uh, we talked about assessing knowledge, how to assess knowledge properly when every student knows how to prompt and how to use AI. We have to adjust the way that we assess students' knowledge and their readiness to enter the workforce. Um, and AI is really forcing that change. In the past, we could have a student write a paper and that would be an assessment of their ability to be able to make sense of a topic, to be able to bring maybe lots of ideas together into an original um, piece of content. So today, AI can do that on its own. And of course, we've seen the results of that, right? Um, today, when that's done and a student doesn't edit it, um, that can be, you know, that's really obvious, right? until they're trying to understand, does a student understand this and they, can they go through this process of not only understanding something and memorizing it, but actually coming up with a new idea, a creative new idea. So I think what the challenge is gonna be is if there's an easier path to, that doesn't require memorization, that doesn't require um, the same kind of research about a topic, or even the same approach to defining a structure for a document, defining the structure for a marketing plan, defining the structure for whatever we're doing, we're, we're, we're creating in class. And instead, the value is in what, now how do you use that structure, use that knowledge to come up with a new idea? And what we then have to assess is their ability to do that creative work, um, to, to do the analysis of, of what they've created. Um, that's challenging. Right, and so I, but I think that that's where we're at. So um, I, I think that you know, if, if as an educator, that's the work that we have to do is take a look at how we're assessing student knowledge, with now look more of an emphasis on how do we assess students' ability to analyze information, and come up with new creative um, ways um, to use that information. So. Yeah, I think that that's, that's the challenge before us and, and that's still emerging as far as how we do that. So what do you think the future with AI looks like? So I think the future of AI looks like something that is going to challenge us in ways as human beings, as educators, um, as, as students, as, as parents, as, 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 as everything. Um, I think it's going to challenge us 
to look at what it means, where do we see value in the work that we do, um, and how, how do we gain knowledge, and how do we use that knowledge. There's a, so what, what I think the future of AI looks like is a quote early on, maybe about a year ago, Bill Gates says, said that AI is like, it's not like the PC or it's not like a, a computer chip, right? when, when silicon chips were invented, right? It's not like that, that it's more like the steam engine. So not third industrial revolution, but first industrial revolution. So we can't imagine what it was like before steam, right? Let alone can we understand what it was like to, before electricity or before the computer chips and we all had phones. It's hard for us to remember that. Um, so if Bill Gates, who was really one of the pivotal figures in the third industrial revolution, is saying this feels more like the first industrial revolution, and what we're going to see then is in every industrial revolution, we saw an increase in the amount of um, capacity what people can accomplish, but also the pace of that change increased. So I think what we're going to see in the future of AI is hard to imagine, just in it would be impossible for someone at the advent of steam power to imagine what it's going to be like as we start to use t cell phones. It's going to challenge our ideas of what it is to be human. Um, it's going to challenge our idea of, of what it means to gain knowledge. Um, but I think most importantly, it's going gonna, it's gonna to challenge us the ways that we stay connected and the ways that we stay, we, we maintain our humanity. So I think, yeah, I think it's going to look like change in a way that's hard to comprehend. And I think the way through it is to stay mindful of where we're at as human beings and, and the importance of connection and the importance of authenticity and actually standing for something um, and having an, an intention and a purpose for the work that we do. Do you find what's happening scary or is just challenging? I mean, just like any, so anytime there's change, there's a natural, maybe the initial response is fear to recoil, right? It's, it's a human response. Um, but then as, as we grow, right, we learn to be able to say, okay, no, I'm still here. Right? And I still know the things I know and the people around me I'm still connected with. So I think the initial response that some people might have to what's happening right, and, and, and the future, what the future looks like, I think fear is probably part of the response. right? But it's the ability to move past that to say this is, this is what's happening. And so how am I going to engage with this? What choices am I going to make? Um, so I don't personally feel a lot of fear now about it. I'm excited about what's happening, but I am I am doing so. I'm, I have concerns about you know what the future holds. Um, but I, I've always had concerns about what the future holds. You know, um, but I think this is different, and I think it's going to require hopefully people to work together in ways that they they haven't rather than people to be first forced further apart. Okay. <laughs> Is there something you want to add? So I, I, I feel right now to be an educator is a time of disruption, right? The, the way that we do things is changing. And being someone who's been through the whole dot-com experience, social media changing, um, and, but also knowing that this is different, um, I'm really grateful that this is happening in my lifetime um, because to be an educator at this moment means that we get to do new things. We get to new, um, make a bigger difference, perhaps, right? And students, and, and kind of usher this whole new generation into this world in which AI is a part of it. Um, will AI define it? It'll be one of the things that defines it, just like everything else. Um, but it's exciting to be a part of that process from the perspective of an, of an educator because I get to see it through people's eyes or at least see see people experience things like AI and what's possible but in a safe place in a place that's, that's an educational experience right in an educational context so they can experiment so they can try new things so they can move past that moment that they're that they're concerned or nervous or even scared and be comfortable and grow confident in their ability to navigate that change thank you so much for your time it was really interesting
That's all for today. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.